Falcon Paladin fans. This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of StarCraft Legacy of the Void. And today we've got a match between Showtime and True on Catalyst, the latter edition. In the bottom right-hand corner of the map, we've got the red Zerg player. It is True. Hailing from Psystorm Gaming and Korea. And in the top left-hand corner, the blue Protoss player, Showtime. From Germany and Arma Team. These two are some of the best players on planet Earth. Very excited to cast this game for you. Strap in, buckle in, buckle up. Let's see. Buckle, uh, yeah. buckle up. Yes, buckle up is the correct phrase. <laughs> Going to go ahead and throw down a gateway. This probe of Showtime's and then Scout. Come on, Showtime. Oh, yes, you wanted me to doubt you, but no. Showtime always, always probe Scouts against Zerg. So if you're having trouble with Zerg as Protoss... Do what Showtime does and Probe Scout. It can help you very, very immensely. True went hatch first, droning up until about 17, and then go to spawning pool or an extractor, depending on what he feels like right now. So he's sitting, uh, there's the spawning pool. Yep, spawning pool up first, which means he's not planning on being too aggressive. Didn't get that extractor first of all. His speedlings are going to be a little bit later than they normally are. And Probe comes in, recognizes the game timer, and says, okay, so this was a hatch first. That extractor is not done. The pool's not anywhere close to be done. I'm going to go ahead and try to mess up the AI on these drones a little bit. Try not to get stabbed by another drone. And hang out. And basically until Lings or Queens force me to leave, which they're not going to, because again, the pool's about 60% complete. And I'm trying to get there, but not for some time. Cybernetics Core coming in here from the Showtime. He's got himself a Nexus as well as his tradition. Second Assimilator now coming. Now this is where things get interesting for Protoss. They could choose to go for any number of um, higher tech buildings. Stargates, robotics facilities, Twilight Councils, sometimes a combination of two or sometimes all three. You don't usually see all three at this level just because it's really expensive to pay for all three tech, I mean tier three units, but uh, I don't think Showtime's going to do that today. First Adept coming in, another second level scout, possibly going to try to get some harassment down, at least force True to deal with it at the very least. Drew is a player who does love his Lings. Ling aggression against Protoss is something he enjoys very much. And it is going to be a Stargate from Showtime. So this could be Phoenix Plan, or it definitely could be Oracles. We'll have to just kind of wait and see. And that is a follow-up Stalker for Showtime. So he's got an Adept, Sonic transferring out. And then we have a Stalker that's going to follow up here too. Speed is like 30% complete here for the Zerg player. So he's got Slow Lings and Queens, which should be able to handle this really no problem. Overlords, slow overlords, scouting and seeing exactly what is coming his way. Oh, and a third base just got tossed down by True, too. It is under construction at the very least. Adept goes in there and says, okay, so I see the queen. I see some links. That's enough for me to say, eh. By myself, can't get a lot done. Where's the stalker at? Stalker is... Oh, stalker going to kill the scouting overlord. This is a good move by Showtime. This is about the time, three, four minutes, that Zerg's going to try to scout in and see what your tech is. And if you don't have any anti-air... You're going to have a bad time. He's going to scout it. Oh, it is a Phoenix. First Phoenix out of Showtime. He's going to finish off the Overlord 2. Nicely done there, a Showtime. All right, so Ling's moving up this right side for True. Got a Phoenix trying to scout that thing out. Oh, finding the other Overlord. Just juked him. So Overlord with 0.9 move speed juked this Phoenix. Did you see that? Did you see that juke? He blinked. Yeah, might have missed it. Ling's dancing around, running around, trying to see, is there a place we can come in here? But no, the walling off is just picture perfect for Showtime. Lings do not have any room to do anything along those lines at all. Oracle, though. Oracle follow-up here from Showtime. Is this, do we name this? You think it's moving out to kill things? I bet it is. All right, so Oracle's name is going to be Oracle of Delphi. After being the main Oracle for the ancient Greeks and Romans, she recovered a job offer. Received a job offer for a new nation. Not knowing who the Protoss are, she was surprised when they strapped her in a spaceship and told her to go kill, dr uh, kill drones. <laughs> the Oracle of... Is it Delphi? I think it's Delphi, now that I'm thinking about it. Pronunciation is weird. Oracle of Delphi. Ah, the classic Showtime move. Lifting up that queen with a phoenix and then oracling down other stuff. But there was another queen there. So only three drones go down. Usually that trick works a little bit better, but that's okay. That's all right. Just that extra queen. Making all the difference for true. Lings trying to hold map control here, but four adepts versus what? Eight lings? Yeah, eight lings. No, not a battle you want to win there, Zerglings, especially without any queen support. So, definitely not going to happen. Third base now getting saturated, and that the Oracle has basically been shoved away. And here comes Showtime with a little bit more pressure. Hydralisk 10 coming in. 
got Zerglings, 14 Lings in production, mind you. Have to see exactly how many more he wants to make, but this is a lot of Adept. And Resonating Glaives is about 50% complete. So Adept's trying to sneak on in here. Revelation is thrown down, but Ugly canceled the transfer. Didn't like what they saw down there. Saw the number of Lings, saw the number of Queens. Showtime said, yeah, how about third base? How about I get third base? I'm going to try to tag up to something a little bit stronger here than just Adepts, because it seems like True is prepared for this. And yeah, True is prepared for this. He's got five Hydralisks in production right now, working on a Muscular Augments. Also getting a Robotics Facility is our German Protoss player. Where are you at? Here you are. Observer, probably, or do we just go right to Immortal? Because again, we are going to see Immortals out of Showtime. It's just you need them. If your opponent goes Roaches or Ultralisks in any way, it's just really super handy. So nothing yet. Nothing yet. Adepts, I just, this is so many Zerglings and Hydras. Yeah, there's a cancel. Showtime, exceptionally patient right now, recognizing, okay. All right, I don't need to do anything here. If I can just force True to make units instead of drones, I'm going to be in a good spot anyway. And he, he has. It's 52 to 46 Harvesters. True's up, but not as much as he otherwise would be if Showtime had just been sitting back at home and not attacking at all. Yes, it is an Immortal. Immortal for Showtime. Getting a shield battery warping in here at the third base location for Showtime. And Oracle coming back in. The Oracle of Delphi. Trying to see... Ugh. Revelation tossed down on those Hydralisks. Just trying to see. Just trying to see what's going on here. Wings dancing. They are dancing, ladies and gentlemen. Am I on full screen? I'm on full screen. My sound looks normal. Yes, great. Okay, that was weird. I don't know what that was. All right, Zerglings. Again, making sure they know when the enemy is going to be coming out here. There are sentries galore right now. Six sentries? Six sentries and a whole ton of adepts. Twelve of them, thirteen of them. Ling's trying to find purchase, trying to find a place where they can kill stuff. It's just very difficult for them right now. Showtime has absolutely defended and prepared for further defense with exceptional levels of skill. Oh, Adepts get back to the shield battery. One gets back to the shield battery. Another big warp of Adepts trying to do this thing. Yeah, that should be enough. Oracle here too. Enough to say no. Okay, so Showtime pushing in with an Adept. Sentry, single immortal push with additional Adepts here. So they got Resonating Glaives, but no other upgrades. Wings. Hydra's dancing. We're doing the dance here. Showtime, he's got to go for it, though, man. These links cannot get into the natural base. They're trying to do stuff at the third base, and it's just not going to work out. Oracle really making that a difficult proposition. This is just so much stuff. Adepts, ugh, they do finish their transfer right on top of these Hydra's Titers. Trying to kite back, get away from them, and murder. Trying to stay alive. Good force fields means no retreat here for True. What a ridiculous move. Out of showtime here at the eight minute mark. It's 122 to 107 total supply. 18 more links in production. Five more hydras here too. But this is just a lot of adept. This is so much adept right now. Lings trying to do what they can, but uh whoa, quick, quick pause in the middle of the action here. Drones here to fight too. Are there enough hydras to make this thing worth it? No, adept's really great against Hydralisks. Goodbye, everything. Goodbye, every single last remaining Hydra. 110 to 63 total supply. I think Showtime has this thing, ladies and gentlemen, and that is a good game. Out of true, true is defeated, and Showtime is victorious in game one of our Sneaky Twofer. Sneaky Sneaky Twofer from Falcon Paladin. So we have another game coming up here, but yeah, what patience. Again, I, I know I say that a lot about Showtime, but that's one of the things that makes him a great player is his just ridiculous amounts of patience. Yeah, look at that. 8,700 resources lost for true compared to 3,300 for Showtime. That is just... Amazing. 34 Hydras, 78 Lings for 21 Adepts. That's a trade anybody would make any day of the week. Yeah, he came in, poked, saw that True was ready, pulled back. Came in, poked again, saw that True was ready, pulled back. And then said, maybe he's not ready this time. And he wasn't quite. True had a lot of Hydras, but Adepts with Resonating Glaives doing that bonus damage versus Light. That's what it's all about. So good job. Game 2 coming at you for the Sneaky Twofer in just a second. Welcome back to our Sneaky Twofer. Between these two players, no, Showtime is not up one. Come on, let's give that, uh, or True's not. <laughs> uh, True's not up one, Showtime is. Showtime is now accurate of the score. All right, so game number two, the Sneaky Twofer will still be between True and Showtime here on Blackpink, the ladder edition for game number two. And in the top right-hand corner of the map, it is the red Zerg player, True. And in the bottom left-hand corner, the blue Protoss player, Showtime. Okay, so now who's going to be the one 
to make it happen here in game number two. Showtime just was clinical, man. Clinical in his patience and his ability to just kind of work around the angles there, checking out the natural base, checking out the third base, absolutely shutting down any aggression of Trues on his side of the map. True killed, no probes. True killed, no sentries. Killed, true killed, maybe unadept on the other side of the map, but that was about it. Everything that died was for the Protoss army on his front door, and I've been saying this for years at this point, but the scariest place for a Protoss army is Zerg is when they're on your front door. You can take them out here near their base or even the middle of the map. There are much better options than the front door because if you lose to a Protoss army right here, you're gonna die. You're just gonna die. It's just too much. It's too much left over pretty much every time. Spawning pool coming in first for true, then the extractor again, pretty much the same build as he did last time, getting that hatch first. There's your gateway, there's your nexus, there's your probe scout, there's your probe trying to see if he can mess up the AI mining for these drones. And yeah, there's your cybernetic score for Showtime as soon as he can toss it down. So these players know what they're doing. They know what they're doing for sure. True's average APM is 380 for the game. Showtime's is closer to 180. He's not a spammer. And you'll notice, you don't have to have crazy, crazy fast APM to beat players. To beat players at your level, right? Let alone beat players apparently at True's level. There was a guy who had really low APM back in the early days of Wings of Liberty. I can't remember who it was. Somebody has to remind me in the comments, but it was like 80? I mean, it was platinum level APM and was just made perfect decisions, didn't spam. Great macro, great timings, and everything worked out. They could compete at this level. We do have a Stargate on the way. We're actually out of Oracle names, believe it or not. Uh, the Oracle of Delphi was the last one. So we're gonna name this one Hermione. Hermione the Oracle. Hermione did a spell that she hadn't quite researched as thoroughly as she should have, which does sound out of character for her, but ended up transporting herself into an Oracle. Now she must kill the Zerg before the Zerg overwhelmed the Protoss forces and she is stuck here without any way of returning. That would be one-way trips, man. Not great. Third hatch on the way for True. Morphing in right away. There is our Stalker to deal with Mr. Overlord. Where are you, Stalker? Ah, in the gateway, in the natural base. Obviously, Overlord's gonna scout this one, though. Again, not a huge surprise that Showtime is gonna go Stargate here, but anything you can know, anything you can know is totally gonna be worth it. So, I actually said an Oracle name before there was an Oracle, didn't I? Yeah, well, it worked out. Worked out in the end. All right, so Overlord, Soul Overlord trying to run. This one actually got some information, so it must pay for that with its life. The other one did not get the information. Actually, did that one die too? Can't remember. In game number one of that Slow Overlord and Scouting Overlord ended up dead. Again, Adept just fainting. Right, fainting. Not F A I N T, faint. F E I N T. Where you come up, check it out, move back. Come up, force the Zerg player to respond a little bit, and then move back. It's like you're going to attack, but then you don't actually follow through. That's what a faint is. It's also a term used in sword fighting where you swing like you're going to attack, but then at the last second switch to something else. Just try to make your opponent think that you're telegraphing your move, but then at the end, it's not what you're doing at all, and you can get a really nice advantage that way. Yeah, Phoenix gonna kill this Overlord. Oh, the Phoenix finished off the first Overlord in game number one. That's what it was. That's what it was. Did you? Okay, so Oracle Hermione gets three kills. It's pretty good stuff, really doing her part to make sure that the Zerg can't be just overwhelmingly powerful here into the mid-game. That's what these early kills are all about, is the fewer drones there are for the Zerg, the fewer they can use to snowball into a giant army and kill you. That is another robotics facility here from Showtime. So pretty much looks like he's doing the same thing he did in game number one. We'll see if True is ready for this one. Although Twilight, no, we did have the Twilight Council because we had Resonating Blades. This could just be a repeat, honestly, but oh, man, if True's not ready for it. Oh, Baneling Nest. Okay, that's the difference. True's getting a Baneling Nest this time. Recognizing if this is the same thing Showtime did to me previously, then having a Baneling Nest would be incredibly useful. Like, ridiculously useful here today. So he's going to do it. Banelings versus Adepts. That's going to be your best bet if there are huge numbers of Adepts. Roach is also not bad, actually, if there are Hydras supporting them behind, but... Mass Hydra, as we see, not as good as you would think it is. Especially, again, against Adepts with the Resonating Glaives. Baneling Ness, just about done for True, and trying to solidify, trying to secure a third base location as a throw of Showtime, throwing it up. Got a couple Zealots this time. He didn't make any Zealots. Oh, he's getting charged. It is different! Oh no, Showtime's playing the mind games! 
Oh boy. Charge lots and archons, man. You're expecting adepts, charge lots, and archons. But you know what? Banelings are still really good against charge lots. Just because the bonus damage versus light is what we're looking for again, for Baneling targets. If you're hitting non-light units, you're not doing it right in general. But I have seen Banelings be used against Mecking Terrans, and it is kind of funny to see them explode a Thor. It just takes a lot. All right, so Ling's coming in, and yeah, these Archons are your problem. They could have handled the rest of it. Could have handled the Adepts and the Zealots, but nope. Not with Archon support. Suddenly, the Lings are not as good as they used to be. Lings coming on into the third base, trying to kill it. Trying to take it down. Oracle, yes, Hermione says, I will protect this base because I need the Protoss to win. And here we go. Baneling's going to crash. Great splits on the Zealots, though. Absolutely perfect splits on the Zealots. Lifting that Queen Zealot versus Queen versus everything here. And it looks like True did manage to clean that thing up. Archon got away. Inside the warp prism, that's why you have a warp prism, is for escapes if necessary. And all right, that was an excellent, excellent hold. Uh, yeah. Bane Leagues didn't hit exactly what they wanted to, but kind of worked out. Oh, Archon's gonna pop here at the third base. Ling say, ooh, let's not, let's not do that. Trying to, wow, can't even pick off transferring. Can't even pick off transferring probes at all. All right, so Archon's pushing across once again. Here for showtime. One, two, three, four, zealot, zealot, warp prism, observer hanging out here. In production, Hydra's linked lurker den for true. Is he gonna get it? Is the question of the day. Is that gonna happen? I don't know. Lings, oh, they're pouring into this third base. So Hermione Oracle trying to help here, but a lot of probes are actually going down. This is more than we saw in game number one for sure, but we've got our zealot archon approach. Notice the archons are in the front. So if the zealots. Don't have to take any Baneling hits that are here. The third base is in a lot of trouble all of a sudden for True. Big warping of Zealots. Looks like True is trying to take up to Lurkers, but I don't know if he's going to have the time to get there or not. Seven probes do go down, but 15 drones down. Here at the seven-minute mark is not what you want to see if you're a Zerg player, but absolutely perfect from Showtime. This is such a scary, scary Protoss player for everybody involved. Look at the micro lifting up the Archon so they don't get surrounded, and I think that might be it. That was just... Textbook 21, 34, 22, and 11 kills on these Archons, not getting surrounded by Lings, not even taking all that much help off of their shields. Hydra's pretty good at dealing with these guys, but nope. Not with charge lots, chasing them down as well. And wow, True with the good game. True is defeated, and Showtime is victorious in games one and two of our sneaky two for today. What a performance. What a performance from Showtime. Just can't ask for more than that from your Protoss player. Man, switched it up on him. The Archons were, they accounted for like 100 kills. I mean, like maybe not quite that many, but towards the end, maybe 100 Lings died, 130 Lings, 12 Hydras, 41 drones went down. Yes, that was clinical. I think I've used that word before. Uh, 8,600 resources lost for true compared to 24, 2,500 for Showtime. I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's just Protoss players study this. Study this man. Study him hard. All right. That's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin with yet another StarCraft Legacy of the Void upload. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what is on, what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.